Investigators believe the Manchester bomber spent three weeks in Libya before returning home to his native UK just days before the concert. Meantime, the French interior minister says he traveled to Syria in the past. My next guest says there's no way he should have been allowed back in the United Kingdom, but yet he was. It's not a mirage, it's Nigel Farage, the man who brought us Brexit. <laughs> He's now a Fox News contributor. Good to see you, Nigel. Um, Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. You know, my first question is how, like, the UK is the, I guess, the fifth richest nation in the world, but they often use the defense of having limited resources. Even if you have limited resources, shouldn't that go to the task of this defense of the realm? Wouldn't that be the most important? No. no. Good Lord, no. You're missing the point. We're spending all our money on foreign aid and giving money to the European Union. I mean, it's mad, isn't it? You know, here we are. Here we are now. We're spending more money giving cash to Brussels. We may have voted Brexit. We haven't left. We're still giving cash to Brussels. We're giving more money in foreign aid, much of it to corrupt regimes. And we spend more doing that than we do actually looking after, uh, you know, our policing uh, and our anti-terrorism services. And I think there's going to have to be, post-Manchester, a big change of attitude. I asked a, a buddy of mine who lives in London, he's, uh, he used to be in a rock band in the 80s, and I won't, I won't say which one. He, when I found out that I was having you on the show, he said, he said, ask him this. Napoleon said the English are a nation of shopkeepers. Is Theresa May more interested in balancing her shopping basket than defending British citizens? I guess it's, again, the same kind of question about allocating resources. Yeah, look, you know, we, as I said, we waste money on a whole load of foreign adventures. Uh, a whole stack of our money is tied up in bureaucracy. But you know something? If you're in trouble in life, you know, personally, whatever it is, that's the moment you borrow money. Right. And there is no sum of money that we can spend stopping atrocities like Manchester that would be considered to me to be a waste of money. And let me tell you that this week, uh, in many ways, innocence has died. Mm -hmm. Firstly, they went after teenage girls. Secondly, we started this week being told by the intelligence services there were 3,000 suspected terrorists living in our country. We end this week being told there are 23,000. Mm. Just think about that. It's amazing, the time bombs. And this guy was allowed back in. How in God's name does that happen? And we're learning that there were chances to stop this guy. Five. Five. Five separate occasions when individuals contacted the anti-terrorism unit to say they were really worried about this man, Abedi. You know, he'd said terrible things. He'd praised suicide bombing. Five separate warnings. And he goes off to Syria. And we only find this out through French intelligence, which is strange, really, because most of our information these days gets leaked from American intelligence. <laughs> uh, but in this case, it came from the French. Uh. He went to Syria and was allowed back into the country. And I've said for years, and I'll say it again, if you leave these shores and go off to fight for ISIS, you should be refused entry back into the country and your passport should be burnt. I've got to go, uh, Nigel. I just want to uh, thank you for doing this and uh, congratulations on joining Fox News. Thank you very much you. indeed. Coming Have up. a good evening, guys. Why did Trump body slam a reporter in Montana? He didn't. He's just getting blamed for it.